are you? I'm Gotham's Reckoning, here to end the borrowed time you've all been living on. You know, I gotta say, like, this right here, it has to probably be, like, the best looking setup I've had in a while. Hmm. So, yeah, of course it's been a while. I know I am unreliable, lazy, when it comes to creating video content, even though I have multiple ideas in my head. I, any, any word you can use to describe someone like me, I'll take it. I'm so sorry. I'm insensitive. I'm irresponsible. I'm hungry. But hey, what's up folks? It's the Methodical AAA and long time no see. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been kind of busy, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about Venom. Oh, for anybody who's wondering, uh, this right here is the pop filter. The mic is out of the camera range, but it might, it might make sense as to why, you know, my audio quality is better than in previous videos. To my house, well, it's not even like this was a recent thing. Which is interesting because I always had this equipment, but I just, I, I, I never used it for the videos. Again, lazy, whatever word you can use to describe me, yeah, it probably makes sense. But anyway, Venom. I was not looking forward to Venom, not in the least, because like many people on the planet, I thought the exclusion of Spider-Man wouldn't make any sense. And also, I don't trust Sony. I, it's ju it just seems like another reason to keep the Spider-Man right. And upon watching Venom, I'll put it like this. Venom is not good, but I gotta say, I kinda love it. And because I feel that I love Venom, I have created bullet points of which I would like to talk about. So, yeah, let's just get right in. So first, I'll start off with the good. In my opinion, Tom Hardy is the best part of Venom. I mean, considering it's Tom Hardy, one would assume that he would, I mean, any any performance he gives, whether it's a bad film or a good film, he always gives his A-game. Like, he's he's one of those actors, all right? Like, Hugh Jackman, Idris Elba, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen. Like, he's one of those actors. Also, uh, considering the exclusion of Spider-Man, there would be certain liberties taken with the character of Eddie Brock in this film. I'd say because they made Eddie a much nicer person than he was in previous incarnations, I feel that actually lends itself well to the film because in this film, Eddie is the kind of person to just completely go out of his way to help somebody. But yeah, since Eddie is a nice guy in this universe, I have no reason to not like him. Another good thing. You see, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I am by any means the biggest Venom connoisseur. All I have to go on is the Spider-Man animated series, which first introduced me to Venom and various comics. Besides the point, another good thing about Venom is I like how in this film they kind of make Venom his own person. Like the symbiote itself is its own person, which based on what I understand, which might not be a lot to the average comic book nerd, the symbiote is definitely a malevolent force, but I'd say it also becomes somewhat of an extension of its host. I'll get back to that later. That's my personal understanding of the symbiote. In this film, Venom is just the symbiote. Venom is his own guy. Like on his own planet, Venom is just walking around like, yeah, I'm doing my thing, you know, I'm, I'm Venom, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a job, I'm, I'm trying to get uh, she Venom to like me. But yeah, since Venom is his own person and since Venom actually talks to Eddie one on one, I feel that would lend itself nicely to like a buddy cop type dynamic. But here is where things kind of fall apart. Now, here's the weird part about Venom. So yeah, I already established that Venom is his own person. One of my problems with the film is how long it takes for Venom to actually show up. I mean, I guess you kind of hear this like in uh, reviews about Venom, like the inconsistent tone. The first half of the film is just like a straight up drama or something like that. And then once Venom shows up, that's when it becomes completely silly which is true. Before Venom actually shows up, like the film, it really has to hammer home that Eddie's life is trash now. He had it all, he had, what's her face? He had Anne in his life, he had the Eddie Brock report, he was doing well for himself, you know, he was making money, everybody loved him, and then once he interviewed Carlton Drake, everything went downhill, everything sucks now, he's drinking his sorrows, by that point you're like, all right, I'm on board, let's get to Venom. And then the film is like, no, 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 you, you really don't understand, we really need to hammer home that Eddie's life is trash. We see Eddie in his apartment, like he's he's applying to jobs. His next door neighbor, he sucks because he's always playing guitar loud. He goes to the convenience store. This lady, like the owner of the convenience store, she, she's getting hustled for protection money. And then by this point, we're like, all right, we got it. 
let's get to Venom. And then the film is like, no, nah, you really don't understand. We really need to hammer home that Eddie's life is trash. Jenny Slate, who works for Carlton Drake, like she 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 comes to Eddie is like, look, everything you said about Carlton Drake is right. And Eddie's like, nah, I ain't helping nobody no more. I, I interview Carlton Drake once, boom, finish. Everything sucks for me now. I'm done helping my fellow man. And then by that point, we're like, all right, we got it. His life sucks. Let's get to Venom. And then the film is like, nah, nah, you don't understand. We really need to cement the fact that Eddie's life sucks. So Eddie goes to Anne's place and Anne is with a new man. I didn't expect for that to rhyme, but yeah. And Eddie's like, oh, fiddlesticks. And then only by that point does he actually call Jenny Slate up and then they go to Carlton Drake's facility and that's where Eddie gets bonded with the symbiote. <laughs> The symbiote doesn't actually bond with Eddie until like the 40 minute mark, right? Like before Venom actually shows up, you know, Eddie's hearing voices in his head. You know, he's having a lot of all these bizarre behaviors and Venom himself, Venom doesn't actually show up until an hour in. Now, in my opinion, that's perfectly fine. You know, you have to, you have to build up to this point, but only then does Venom actually talk to Eddie one-on-one. -on -one. Only then do they actually have a conversation, which leads me to my other problem. Venom warms up to Eddie Brock and planet earth way too quick i heard that tom hardy said that there was like 40 minutes cut from this film and honestly i believe it from what i understand uh venom's whole motivation is he needs carlton drake's rocket to bring more symbiotes from their home planet onto earth so that they can eventually devour everybody and take over the earth but by the time venom has to fight riot venom's whole motivation has changed to we, we, we gotta stop riot from bringing more of our kind to kill everybody because I, I i like i like this planet now you see for me at least this is where the potential of the buddy cop aspect is lost from the time venom actually appears to the point where Venom is forcibly removed from Eddie, only like 12 minutes pass. Now granted, you can do a lot in 12 minutes. I mean, Venom bit a guy's head off, he talked to Eddie, he demolished a SWAT team, and he convinced Eddie to apologize to Anne, all within those 12 minutes. And hell, if you wanna talk about the Spider-Man cartoon, within like five minutes of Venom's first appearance, he completely solidified himself as one of Spider-Man's best enemies. But for that amount of time to pass, and then once Venom gets rebonded with Eddie, for Venom's whole motivation to change like that, and when Eddie asks Venom what made him change his mind, Venom says, you did Eddie, you did. How? How, how, how exactly did Eddie convince you not to bring more of your kind to kill everybody on Earth? I how you see that might be a scene missing from the apparent 40 minutes that were cut from Venom. If so, then well, and also there doesn't really seem to be a we in Venom, in my opinion. Like he doesn't seem to be acting on Eddie's negative impulses or like even feeding Eddie's negative impulses. Like Eddie doesn't really become more malevolent with the symbiote's presence while Venom is kind of just doing all his crazy shit. Like Venom, Venom is firmly in the driver's seat while Eddie is just like he's kind of a bystander in his own body, just like, oh, Venom, you. So when Eddie and Venom say, we are Venom. I'm like, mm. I mean, I know it's meant to symbolize that Eddie and Venom are cool with each other, which, yeah, I totally get. But I think it would make more sense for Eddie to say, Hi, I'm Eddie, and this is my wacky roommate Venom. We're the odd couple. Now, in my opinion, all of these grievances could have been fixed with one scene. A scene where Eddie and Venom have a serious heart-to-heart -heart conversation and find some common ground. You know, maybe Venom is about to do something really reprehensible, and Eddie, through sheer willpower, forces Venom to stop. I mean, keep in mind, by the time Venom actually appears. Eddie is exhausted, sweaty, malnourished. He's dealing with a whole bunch of other issues that we probably don't even know about. So for Eddie to accomplish this, this would definitely get Venom's attention like, oh, so this ain't no average guy. And also, since Eddie is a much nicer person in this incarnation, it would make sense for him to put his problems aside just to make sure that Venom didn't cross the line. Maybe after this, Venom would ask Eddie how and why he was able to do this, and I guess that could lead to Eddie talking about his life. You know, 
stuff that Venom already knows about because Venom's inside Eddie's head, but Eddie's open honesty would motivate Venom to open up about his own life on his home planet. And I guess that's where you could reveal that Venom was a loser, kind of like Eddie. Since in the actual film, we didn't even know that Venom was apparently a loser until he went to fight Riot. And we're gonna get to Riot. But bottom line, that conversation could help strengthen the bond between Eddie and Venom. So by the time Eddie asks what convinced Venom to change his mind, Venom can say, you did Eddie. And I'd believe it. I mean, this wouldn't be the first time a heart to heart conversation strengthened the bond between characters. I mean, like in my Star Wars The Last Jedi review, going back to Power Rangers, the campfire scene in the 2017 Power Rangers film, I feel that is probably the best scene in the entire film because that is just characters opening up to each other and strengthening the bond. So by the time they actually become the Power Rangers, I feel that they are a true team. But let's get to the bad now. Carlton Drake and Riot. Now, I would say that this is one reason why making symbiotes their own person is bad. Again, I'm not the biggest Venom connoisseur, so I don't know if there's a world famous comic strip where the symbiotes are just on their own planet, chilling, talking to each other, making babies, you know, just being their own people, and then they come to Earth and then bond with people, and it's exactly how it is in this film. I don't know if there's a comic like that. The way I understand it, symbiotes are definitely a malevolent force who, when bonded to hosts, act on those malevolent impulses but also become extensions of their hosts. And I'm going to explain why I feel making symbiotes their own people was bad. You see these two, their relationship started as business partners Tony Stark and Obadiah Stane, and their relationship ended as Iron Man versus Iron Monger. Now in Iron Man, I felt that that dynamic worked because we saw their relationship deteriorate to that point. Now let's bring this to Venom. I would say I I liked Carlton Drake. I mean, it's not like he had any depth to him, but I, I liked Carlton Drake and I liked Eddie's animosity towards Carlton Drake because I thought I knew where that dynamic was gonna go. You know, like in different incarnations, I see Venom as you know, somewhat of an extension of Eddie Brock. So I felt the same could have been done for Carlton Drake's transformation into Riot. I mean, sure, the climax of the film would be Venom versus Riot, but since the symbiotes would be extensions of their host, the true core of the fight would be the hatred between Eddie Brock and Carlton Drake, much like Tony Stark and Obadiah Stane. But that shit didn't happen. Remember how I said the symbiotes are just their own people? Yeah, Riot, he, he's his own guy who has his own beef with Venom that is completely unexplored. I mean, even though Eddie's conflict with Carlton Drake lacks depth, I would say that's more interesting. But since... Venom's conflict with Riot has more stakes. Eddie's conflict with Carlton seems like small potatoes. So now we're stuck with a hero versus villain story that got cut off right before it got interesting and another anti-hero versus villain story that goes completely unexplained. And also once Riot bonds with Carlton Drake, I'd say this is where they really dropped the ball with Carlton Drake because like I said, I thought I knew where it was going. You know, like when Venom bonds with Eddie, Eddie's going off the wall. You know, he's he's having all this bizarre behavior. Like he's, he's completely flipping out. Once Riot bonds with Carlton Drake, I thought that was gonna be a perfect moment to have the same with Carlton Drake, except, you know, not nearly as comedic because he's the villain. We're supposed to take him seriously. He's gonna be, you know, a lot more unstable and this is gonna be a bigger threat for Venom to overcome. I thought that was gonna happen Happen. But now Carlton Drake, like, as soon as he bonds with Riot, he's just like, I mean, sure, he's sweating a little, but he's, he's calm, he's collected, he's just chilling, he's like... Ah, oh, what a masterpiece. Look at that. This is your legacy. A new generation of weapons with this at its heart. I've been holding you up. I built this company for nothing. You've upgraded your armor. I've made some upgrades of my own. How ironic, Tony. Trying to rid the world of weapons. You gave me the best one ever. Now, I'm gonna kill you with it. Yeah, that, that, that was... 
definitely a missed opportunity. I don't even think the 40 minutes that were apparently cut from Venom, I don't even think they could fix that part. And also, considering that Riot is his own guy who's separate from Carlton Drake, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that Riot has to be one of the worst comic book movie villains ever. Riot is worse than Steppenwolf. I mean, at least Steppenwolf was there. Riot has less screen time than Venom did in Spider-Man 3. But yeah, that is, I'd say, my detailed beef with Venom. Even with all of that said, I really still enjoyed it. I, 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 think, I think I realized why I enjoy Venom so much. I have figured out that Venom, he's the manic pixie dream symbiote. I mean, seriously, this plays out, in my opinion, it plays out exactly like a story with the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. I mean, like, the protagonist, like, he's down on his luck, his career's not popping the way he wants it to, and then, well, in comes this girl slash parasite that turns his life upside down. It's refreshing, you should try it. Oh, no, no, thanks. No, come on. No, I, you know what, I think that was good enough for the both of us. Come on. What are you, shy? Ow! <laughs> Rachel. You know, I could I could play something else. I just think out of context, this might be. Dracula musical. Thank you. And, uh, you gonna eat anybody else? Most likely. Oh God. And also, I noticed one more thing. One more thing. Early in the film, when the 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 spacecraft carrying the symbiotes crashed towards Earth, Carlton Drake said when he was referring to the pilot, I assume. Oh yeah, that's Jameson. You mean to tell me John Jameson was in this film and they did him dirty again? That's what we hashtag justice for John Jameson. But yeah, I'd say that is entirely how I feel about Venom. Like so many people, there are certain superhero films where I would take dead seriously like this one's good ain't no discussion about it this one's bad ain't no discussion about it this one you can have whatever discussion you want and i will agree with you you say it's good i'm like tom hardy killed it you say it's bad i'm like riot was trash this this is my superhero film middle ground the film is not really good it's it, it's it's not really good but there are good parts in it and there are bad parts in it and i kind of even though i have beef with the bad parts I can take the entire film as a whole and watch it again. This was bound to happen at some point. So do I really care where they go with Carnage? Not really. If in the Venom sequel, since it's gonna have Carnage, everybody wants it to be rated R, all I want is for them to maintain the tone that was present in this film. Bring Tom Hardy's crazy awesome performance again, pair him up with Woody Harrelson, come on, come on buddy. Come on buddy. That is how I feel about Venom 2018. So yeah, that's that's all I had to say. Um, I'm the methodical AAA. And let's hope that I actually, at some point, some point soon, let's hope that I actually make another video. Because this is, this. I'm getting mad at myself. This is entirely bullshit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my YouTube channel. I'm like, why have I not uploaded? What's up with me? What is, what, what what's the deal, dude? I guess, I guess I would need a symbiote to bond with me, to motivate me, like just constantly talking in my head like, what are you doing? You should make another video. Why are you laying around? Make another video. Oh, you tired from work? Too damn bad. Make another video. I, I need that motivation in my life. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's just it. Uh, I'm the Methodical AAA. Peace.